Well, I'll start with the first question and then try to relate it to the second one. I think um, my philosophy is separate from my spirituality because philosophy is basically about words and language and speaking. Um, and maybe in the past, philosophy has been concerned with using those words to find the objective truth. Um, but when I use the word nowadays, what I mean is um, effective communication. Um, communication that is clear, concise, systematic, and uh, doesn't contradict itself. That's what philosophy means to me. So philosophy is the art of good communication, basically. Uh, effective communication. It's no longer about finding the objective truth, because we simply cannot know the objective truth as subjective creatures. It's, it's just not in our uh, capability. Um, and so... One of my favorite philosophers, and I think he's probably influenced me a lot, is Soren Kierkegaard. And um, one of the things he's written is that uh, the greatest paradox of thought is that it wishes to think that which cannot be thought. Um, that's what the rational mind is after if it, if it desires the objective truth. If it really wants to have um, true scientific knowledge of the world, well, it's set up uh, quite a paradox for itself. And so Kierkegaard's call that we become aware of our subjective being is a very important one, I think. Um, and so other philosophers that have influenced me are mostly psychologists because psychology is really um, the result of existentialism of Kierkegaard and, and Nietzsche and uh, Heidegger it's it's the reaction to philosophy becoming so aware of itself that it saw that its goal was no longer possible so I think people like uh, Carl Jung William James um, on Dewey, these these guys were, you know, it's unfortunate they're all guys. I should think of some. I mean, I just I can't think of any women philosophers who have influenced me. Which I'm, I mean, that's just that's just another thing about philosophy that makes it sort of limited, isn't it? But. Um, when I think about Kim Wilbur now, um, as a philosopher, he is trying to systematize everything, um, and he but he claims to be integral. But you know we have to ask now what what the hell does integral mean? There's lots of ways of looking at it. Um, Ken Wilbur really likes to look at it his way with his language, which is the a qual um, model. All quadrants, all levels, is what AQUAL stands for, and it's basically a, a, a two-axis graph which which has four quadrants: um, an interior individual quadrant, which is I, the um, you know the conscious awareness, my experience. Then there is um, an external individual existence, which is you know, the world of matter, like this cup and all the artifacts in the world, my body, that you can see with your eyes, that the surface of my body. Um, the lower, or the, um, there's also an objective um, plural or objective uh, community, which is basically the system of planet Earth, the biosphere. And then there's also um, an internal or subjective community or a culture, an intersubjective uh, being. Um, and all four of these quadrants are expressions of one spirit. And that's Ken Wilber's system. 
and you know apparently he has really developed his subjective consciousness i've seen a video of him uh, doing all kinds of tricks with an, in, uh, an EEG machine with reading his brain waves and he's saying, okay, I'm going to go into Delta now. Within a couple seconds, it's, you know, in Delta and then Alpha and Beta and Gamma and he's just doing it. So he's obviously um, very trained uh, in various meditation techniques and that's amazing. Um, my issue is that his philosophy and his spirituality have to be separate because for me, spirituality isn't about the model that we build. It's not about uh, eight ball. It's not about uh, the book that we write. It's not about how many pages we can compile, how many footnotes we can compile. Spirit can't be spoken. So as a philosopher, sometimes it seems to me that Ken Wilber is trying to find the objective truth. And for me, that type of philosophy doesn't exist anymore. And that's what I think integralism is all about. It's not a philosophy. It's not even a psychology. It's all of that. It's the ability to hold all of that psychology, philosophy, theology, mythology, archaeology, all of that in mind, but also not be um, trapped by any particular aspect of it, not be compelled to reduce all of existence into one system or one preferred metaphor or model. Because when, you, when we do that, we really close ourselves off to an open experience of what being is. Uh, because if we're going to take spirituality into consideration at all, then it requires a transformation of not only uh, how we can train our brains to... Uh, take certain states of consciousness, but how we can be aware of the world always um, is more of an ever-present quality of our being and not just uh, a skill that we have developed. Those skills can be useful, but Ken Wilber is just not a mystic. And so he doesn't... He isn't expressing a spirit, he's more trying to describe it very effectively and efficiently. And that to me just seems like he's, he's chasing his tail. And maybe he realizes that, but his public image certainly doesn't suggest that he does. I've never met him, so I can't really say. Maybe that's the problem, he's just too popular. Um, I really prefer William Irwin Thompson uh, as an integral theorist, or maybe Sri Aurobindo, but that could just be because William Irwin Thompson is not as popular as Wilbur. And he hasn't been exposed to as, as much criticism, um, but though, you know, I also have to credit uh, William Irwin Thompson a little bit because his books, his uh, ways of approaching integralism are less academic maybe than Wilbur's or less um, you know Thompson calls Wilbur's books uh, textbooks um, whereas he talks about someone like Gene Gebser who's another integral theorist who's uh, pretty amazing um, Gebser goes into you know specific works of art and describes how perspectivalism arose in uh, Leonardo da Vinci's paintings and Renaissance Europe and, and really expresses his deep cultural understanding of humanity. Whereas Wilbur is always focused on these very abstract conceptual maps that encompass everything. Um, Thompson just thinks he's sort of uh, brushing over something that um, the whole point of being alive 
is to experience it and not try to ga gain this overarching, uh, overarching conceptual understanding of because if you ever actually did get the full view of it from outside, well, you'd be dead. So, integralism has to be alive. It can't just be a philosophy. It has to be a life practice. And, you know, Wilbur has all this stuff, and I shouldn't really be criticizing him. I've never met him, but um, you know, hopefully that gives you a better idea of where I stand and all that. Thanks for the questions, by the way.